Earlier this month, a private Israeli space agency called Space Eel managed to send its lunar spacecraft Beersheet on an orbit of the moon. A quite fantastic achievement for a private space agency on a relatively small budget. It even managed to take a selfie at only 13 miles from the moon's surface. Excellent work, Israel. But guess who wants to rain on their parade like an unwelcome fart in a packed lift? Bob and the Globebusters team. That's who. Hello all and welcome to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Cy Mandan. Before we start today's episode, I just want to quickly mention that the first ever debate to take place on this channel will be happening on Monday the 6th of May at 8pm UK time between Conspiracy Cats and Nathan Thompson of the official Flat Earth and Globe Discussion Facebook group. Put this one in your diaries guys, it's going to be a classic. Right, on with today's episode. For those of you who don't know who the Globebusters are, they comprise of Jeronism, Interesting. Who proved the Earth has curve. The Morgyle. Yet uh, this one single observation of Venus um, after 11 p.m. debunks the heliocentric theory. Who proved he didn't understand 3D space. And their leader, Bob. A 15 degree per hour drift. Who proved that the Earth moves. Thanks, Bob. Now, the Globusters make a living out of being the Dunning-Kruger poster boys, and despite being absolutely slaughtered by Professor Dave Explains, link in the description, last month, the boys are still up to their old tricks, so I thought I'd give them another run. We'll start during their weekly livestream on Sunday, where the Globusters start to discuss the news of the Israeli lander. I guess one of the first things that... Uh happened this week oh i guess let's talk about uh let's talk about the uh israeli moon moon landing <laughs> oh boy yep uh, i got kind of uh i wouldn't call it screwed but uh yeah i saw that it was about to happen and i said man should i go live to see this and sometimes i think it's better to wait until you see the outcome and then to construct a little video around it but i was like no let's go live i i don't think they're gonna land it um you know, or at least, obviously, really. I mean, I know that it's going to be faked. Oh, yes, it's definitely going to be fake. Absolutely. Personal incredulity does not mean fake. So it was just a matter of how they were going to go about faking it. And then, uh, of course, I you know, start my video. And as soon as I do, uh, it crashes, supposedly. I don't, of course, there's no camera footage of it, of course. And this is something to look at. Why go to all that trouble to come up with a fake lunar landing and then have it crash on the surface? There's literally no point in that. No, none at all. And I mean, everything leading up to it was just an utter joke. Um, like this, for example, you know, we get these little animations um, and it gives you the thing that says, oh, telemetry, okay. And we get, you know, even more little <laughs> animations about the engines firing, you know, and which one's firing. And it's really a cool little nifty graphic, but it looks like it should be something that would be on Kerbal instead of an actual, you know, space agency. This space agency has an annual budget of $100 million and only 30 staff. Now that's bloody impressive if you ask me, considering that NASA has a budget, an annual budget, of $21.5 billion and over 1,000 staff. Um, I would think so, yeah. <laughs> it looks just like, like Kerbal, except for I think Kerbal has more uh, details for you than this screen does. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. And of course, as we expected, it is in absolute stark violation of, uh, what was it? Crow's uh, Law of HD. There you um, go. <laughs> which, uh, of course, states that anything that can be filmed in HD will be filmed in HD. Um, and, you know, with multiple different perspectives and aspects and stuff. But I mean, instead, here's what we get, ladies and gentlemen. We get little funky animations that that really, frankly, suck right? They're not even good animations. Um, they're just like little blinking lights. It's so pathetic. It is utterly laughable. I mean, what do you say about this? I find Bob's attitude here positively sickening. He slags off these animations to his heart's content without providing a shred of evidence to show that space doesn't exist. A 15 degree per hour drift. Yes, you've proved rotation, Bob. I know. I'm talking about space now. You know, Israel, yeah, they're a small country. They have big ambitions. But 
Um, you know, with the amount of money that goes into this, you'd think that they would have been able to afford, you know, at least one HD camera uh, that video, Jeez. but but no. But you've already seen there is a camera, unless of course you expect a secondary craft to film it. You know. Yeah, and it just gets ridiculous when we start talking about what they can afford. I mean, clearly they can afford anything when you're talking about these these missions that are multi-million dollar multi-hundred millions of dollar missions uh the fact that we even have to ask well i wonder why they couldn't put a camera on there is indicative of, of exactly what this is and then you know for this to be on the screen on the left here where we're watching this little cgi diagram uh if that was really showing us what was going on at the time then i'm assuming we would be able to see it crash in that little depiction but clearly that's not actual <laughs> data driven dear oh dear Jaren thinks that the animation is drawn in real time based on the data look space agencies aren't there to satisfy the whim of every bunch of flat earthers who can't see past their noses and the people that worked on the Israeli lander certainly wouldn't have said oh should we send up a second aircraft with HD video just so that Bob and Jaren can see that the whole thing is real they operate on a budget that's the equivalent of two days worth of NASA's budget. Give them some slack. You know, the whole right. thing was, it, it was so perfectly scripted. It fit right into a one hour time slot, uh, right. 51 minutes. So they could put commercials in, obviously I'm sure. And they probably are. Um, but yeah, it, it was just so short and sweet and, you know, they had everything ready. You know, all of these stuff was, um, clearly scripted, you know, from the get go. Notice how Bob serves up the word salad in a really confident manner and then just follows it up by saying it's scripted. No evidence, no proof, just says that it's all made up. And right. uh, I mean, just the whole layout in here, even when, you know, even when you look at what they're looking at, they're just looking at animations too in this control room, which is absolutely absurd. I mean, look at this. Right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not one picture from from there is you know from the camera except for this one up here in the upper right, which is so easy to fake. It's not even funny. I mean, first of all, the moon looks completely CGI there. I mean, that's not what the moon looks like. But well, you spend half your time explaining to your subscribers that the moon isn't even a physical body. So how can you stand there and say that that's not even what the moon looks like? Utter drivel. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you even if you have a little picture of the moon that you zoomed in from some telescope and then you just put this little layer of this little gold craft with its little flag, uh, man, it's such nonsense. I just can't get over it. But uh, people love it, including me. Now, be prepared for some absolute top grade Dunning-Kruger coming your way, people. It really is glorious. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm also noticing the, the lack of brightness for the moon. I mean, where's that 64,000 lumens? Um, right. <laughs> that should be there. It should be absolutely blinding. Um, but it's not. And, and obviously the sun's, you know, got to be coming from behind it. You know, you've got this, this placard lit up fairly well. Right. right. Um, but everything seems to be dark and it's like, well, if the, if it's going to obey the inverse square law of light, then that moon should be absolutely well, blinding. But does the inverse square law work when we're talking about reflective light? No, Bob, it doesn't, especially when you are that close to the object. And we've also got no idea at the exposure settings of that photo. And right. it, it, it's sitting there completely dark as can be. I mean, I don't know how much faker you were, this could be. Right, and if you were this close to the moon and it was only that bright, then you could do the, you know, the inverse square law working backwards and the moon would be invisible by, you know, a thousand miles hang on let's just go back a second there what did Jaren say right and if you were this close to the moon and it was only that bright then you could do the you know the inverse square law working backwards and the moon would be invisible by you know a thousand miles right and if you were this close to the moon and it was only that bright then you could do the you know the inverse square law working backwards and the moon would be invisible by you know a thousand miles absolutely clueless let alone you know 238,000 yeah, it's interesting. What was the? Do you happen to know what the moon phase uh, was on this day a couple days ago? How far are we off from a new moon are we? I was just wondering, wouldn't that be interesting, right? It would, Bob, but not for the reasons you think. I think you'll find that when you are only 13 miles away from the moon's surface, that moon phases are kind of redundant, and they probably would look completely different to how they look on Earth at the same time. 
It was like a few days, five, six, seven days away from or off of a new moon, heading towards full. Okay, so it was waxing, waxing then. Okay, yeah. So yeah, maybe that's part of it. It, You know, because that would be really interesting since we can't obviously see a new moon. uh, It would be really interesting to see how they portray a new moon if they were going to land a spacecraft on it. And it looks like he's going to continue with the ignorance. Does Bob think that the new moon disappears or something? And again, it might not be a new moon to that lander. That lander could see the whole face of the moon. We don't know. But maybe NASA will be listening to us and actually try and make that happen. NASA are not listening to you guys. They don't even know who you are. In fact, they don't even know who I am. This whole thing is way down on their list of priorities. We shall see. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Anyway, all right, so then they get up to, let's see, let's keep playing this thing. Then they get up to this little part where he says, oh, my goodness, it it crashed. Everybody's kind of waiting around. Then they grab the microphone, and let's listen to what he says here really quick. We, We had a failure in the spacecraft. We, unfortunately, have not managed to land successfully. We are the seventh country to orbit the moon and the fourth to reach the moon's surface. And uh, it's a tremendous achievement up to now. Completely agree. It really is. Well, we didn't make it, but we definitely tried. And I think that the achievement of getting to where we got is really tremendous. I think we can be proud. Indeed, you should be. Amazing effort. Don't listen to what those silly space-denying flat earthers have to say, Israel. All right. So, I mean, do these guys even seem the least bit upset? They're just like, oh, well, yeah, didn't make it. No big deal. Hey, we tried. Shucks. (laughs) Gee, Bob, what do you want from them? Sobbing? Full-on crying? (laughs) Shucks. (laughs) And he said that they're the fourth one to, uh, did he say to land on the moon? Is that, that what he said? To reach the moon? I want to write it just to hear, I want to hear what he said about being the fourth what? Okay. Uh, a little, little further, a yeah, little bit. A little bit back. All right. There you go. go. I just want to, to hear what he said the again. Moon and the fourth to reach the moon's surface. And um, <laughs> yeah, they reached it so, the hard way, though, right? They crashed into it, <laughs> right? But but they're not the fourth to reach it, according to everything I've ever read. And you have the United States, you have Russia, you have China. He says they're the fourth, which would put them at number four. But um, the people who found that there was supposedly water on the moon was India. How can you be wrong so many times in one video, especially about something that you can Google in five seconds? Russia reached the lunar surface first with Luna 2. Second was the USA with Ranger 4. And most recently it was China in 2013. Israel are actually the fourth. India had an orbiter in 2008, but their lunar lander isn't launching till later this year. And India supposedly crashed their craft, controlled crashed, uh, at the south pole of the moon, so they would be fourth. So it's just funny to me that they can't even get their stats right. There we are, folks. This coming from a man who did this. As far north as you can go, you'll find birds, reindeers, squirrels, rabbits, insects, and all decorated with plants, shrubs, flowers, and more. Within 70 degrees south, no plant, insect, or bird is found. Our survey said... And there's the hat trick. Hey, genius. You've just said that no bird is found at 70 degrees south, and your screen is showing a bird that lives at 70 degrees south. Emperor penguins live and breed between latitudes of 66 and 77 degrees. The Globusters moved on after this, so we'll call it a day here. I really wanted to big up Israel because they have absolutely achieved great things. Besides, I think I made my point, and that is that when it comes to proof, the only balls the Globusters are busting are each other's every time they fall out with each set of flat earthers. Well, that wraps up another episode of Flat Earth Friday. I do hope you enjoyed it today. If you did, a like and subscribe would be wonderful. I have been Simon Dan, and I shall see you all on Tuesday where the Patreon voted video winner is looked at again. See you all then.